the red. Thresh, respect man thrown with caution of the wind up against Snowflower. We were talking about this the other day. There's a couple of must ban champions. Thresh from Snowflower, number one, has to be banned away from him or you just lose the game. We saw him play it last time. Convincing victory, their fastest game here in the tournament. The fastest game of MSI in, the, in general. So they have to get that one away. Rakan is another big one as well that we'll have to look forward to and explore. But Pentagram are on blue side, so perhaps they don't actually ban that away. Yeah, Gangplank though, banned by LJL. Wanted to get that one off. Kha'Zix on the other side, so kind of targeting Wonsa's jungle is there. Kha'Zix we've seen a little bit of in this tournament, including uh, a time by once, almost said once by once, as Kaiser gets banned away by Supermassive. So giving respect there to Tori, certainly the star player on Pentagram this tournament. And I will actually highlight the Gangplank ban first and foremost as something taken away from Fab Fabulous. Known to play tanks, can also play carries, has displayed his mastery of both at this tournament, and it may be a direction that Pentagram want to force him towards. Perhaps just get a better matchup for Paz by getting rid of the Gangplank. You can now look towards the likes of the Camillas and earlier rotation if the stars align through this draft. Well, there's Morgana banned away as another support takeaway from Snowflower. Had a lot of uh, presence so far in the tournament. No one really wants to play against Morgana. And I wonder if Supermassive will give them the option to take Rakan here. That's kind of the one thing that's sticking out as they've got five seconds yeah. to lock in this last ban. Uh, Rakan, Caitlyn is also another one that stands out amongst the AD carries with a super high priority. And then we mentioned the Camille perhaps towards the top lane. Rakan definitely the number one of those three in my eyes. But it's definitely about a compositional thing. What, it is, what is it that your team wants to achieve, especially against Supermassive? I think early lane control is a big win. Well, there's the Swain ban, so Supermassive kind of saying we'll trade those power picks as Rakan is the first pick there for Pentagram. I mean, you mentioned Snowflower's Thresh. It did show up in the game that he played it in, and again, will likely not be seen for a while, but his Rakan also showed up. That was the other two games he's played so far in the tournament, so a play that's tough to keep down, but they're trying with his first set of bands and this pick. Looks like Supermassive, though, are going to take away Zaya. Yeah, they deny the duo. Caitlyn's still a p potential pick for them and something that could perhaps bully the Zaya out, but with that Zaya, any support really could be seen. The opportunities are there as they know it's a Rakan. They could push it in. They could just try and withstand the lane, but Morgana's gone, so it's not the easiest thing to do, just sitting there and withstanding. Kind of interesting to see Zaya picked with Caitlyn still up, as you mentioned, but again, breaking them up does make sense. I love this, though. Snowflower going to play the counter pick. Leona is the lock-in. Yeah, they're just going to go ham now. They want to get aggressive, go into the face, something that does work with the Zaya. The 2v2, not even knowing what the AD carry is, doesn't matter. You're going to play this lane out in a very single, singular style, one simple way. It's about what a pentagram do to counteract that fact. It's maybe one of the reasons you don't play Caitlyn, is that Caitlyn and Leona are a little less fun or aggressive than Zaya plus Leona. So I think pentagram will take the Caitlyn here. They have already locked it in for you, Tori. So again, a lot of stock being put in his ability as an AD carry player. It looks like Trundle also going to somewhat support that in a very popular jungle in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, as the first three picks go here for Pentagram, very stock standard as the tournament dictates as well. Good meta champions, not a lot of counters available in the jungle role against the Trundle. It's not something that, it's not a role that you can blind pick. Let's put it that way. Jungle is really difficult to blind pick. With all of the options there, Elise actually proves to be one of the newer approaches to this. It's kind of one of the reasons you mentioned is that when you take a jungle like Trundle and Blind, you invite your opponents to pick something either more aggressive or more defensive and dictate how that matchup's going to go. So certainly the aggressive side here for Stone Mage, at least have not seen it in a very long time. That is incredibly aggressive. The way I see it already is that they're just going to go bottom lane. They're going to go there all the time. Leona or Elise ganking together the crowd control, the damage complementing each other as well. That's now a scary place to be on Summoner's Rift for Pentagram in particular. Yeah, I'm seeing some synergy here as we move into the next ban phase. Rise actually banned on the super massive side as Ramune has not shown a mid laner. In fact, picks are mirrored in the first six. So we'll see what Pentagram want to target. Do they go to GBM? Do they go to mid lane? We know he's got a very deep champion pool from his regular season in the TCL. And actually, Aurelia is going to be the ban away from Fab Fabulous, who again has shown up on both carries and tanks already. Yeah, getting rid of the Aurelia, something that we have seen in this particular group of MSI as well by Chippies in the last couple of days, shows that it's very good into Nar specifically. That is the one hard counter that always comes to mind when you see that. And banning away the Gangplank, banning away the Aurelia could be a sign of what they're looking to pick here for their top laner in Pentagram. Paz has played a lot of Nar, as it turns out, so maybe on the money there. Is Cassio going to be the next band there? Maybe setting up a kind of a different sort of mid lane there for GBM. But Pentagram will see if they go top once more for this next ban or if something like the Vladimir really sticks out to me. GBM had such a good performance on the champion 
I mean, the, again, there are too many champions to really take them away, but Vlad to me feels like it may just be so strong that it's worth throwing a ban to, and Pentagram yeah. have done their homework. They ban the Vlad. Yeah, you watch a single game from Supermassive, you watch him hard carry for them as well. Being unlocked out of lane is the Vladimir, mean, diving towards his other lanes far more aggressively. And I think the dive threat of a Vladimir and Elise is actually one of the scariest things you'll ever play against in League of Legends in tandem. Having the repel, having the blood pool, the ability to disengage then reset aggro, super scary. So I like that they take away the pick and the potential combo. Well, actually, Karma here, so a very different type of solo landing here with Leona presumably going support. We haven't seen the top Karma just yet. It is, of course, possible, but I'm expecting this for mid lane. And again, Zeit not getting kind of a lot of support put his way now as GBM's going to fall back to something more utility-based. The beauty of the red side, of course, for Supermassive is that they don't reveal where the Karma goes if they decide on a win that they want to put it towards the top lane. Pentagram will assumedly try and pick into the Karma in that mid lane, however. And this is not exactly something that hard wins the lane, but does have a lot of control, does have a lot of single target damage. Not that there's a lot of simple targets for her to hit him. Yeah, Leona too, very tanky. Both Zaya and Elise, who are have a ways to go in, uh, untargetable for a section. So maybe tough, but I think Ramune mostly just falling back on comfort here in the mid lane. And we'll see what their last pick is. Orn has received quite a number of bans this tournament, and Paz with, again, no, maybe a risky blind pick potentially is going to take the on here into top lane. So pretty solid team fighting stuff here from LGL. The Syndra kind of sticking out, but will do her job certainly in those scenarios. Where there is on, there is usually a Scion on the opposite side, but damage is something that could be nice for Supermassive here for Fab Fabulous. Perhaps round out the team composition with a bit of extra team fighting damage would be nice. Utility as well is going to be a big plus. Looks like they might just be trying to protect some of their divers and their AD threat, and it will be once again the Shen locked in for Fab Fabulous. Had a great performance on it, kind of doing the opposite of what he did on those Gangplank games. And we have seen it into the Orn as well, to a great deal of success. A lot of Orn's early trading is based off the auto attacks. Get the Brittle, smack them with your hammers, and actually lock them down for some good damage. Shen does defuse that, does control the early laning phase, and Mosty's not a pushing champion, has control of the push early. Look at mid lane, GBM does have a decent amount of push. There should be a lot of pressure from Zeitnot and Snowflower may enable them to do the same thing. You just think Stone Mage's opinion of this map right now is very good. He's very happy with the outcome of this draft so far. I mean, he's been huge in the tournament so far. So I think it's kind of interesting to see TCL shift a lot of power early to him and give GBM, again, the more utility-based champion. But we keep harping on it. One of his strengths is his versatility. So I think it's smart of Supermassive to play, I would say, a pretty stable, safe, consistent comp, but also, you know, show a few more things. Show that you can play more than just your snowball style. Yeah, I think what's interesting, it's not just the versatility, it's the creativity that they've got in particular. Their ability to map around, avoid vision, circumvent the vision, place vision themselves to get to areas effectively set themselves up for success in the most efficient possible way to get the victories something they've been doing throughout all of the second day of msi when they went three and oh well we'll have to see exactly how it all shakes out pentagram backs against the wall as they try and fight for a unlikely but still possible spot and Supermassive, of course, looking to put themselves best foot forward as they look to lock that first place spot. 4-0 is a real good start to trying to get the only spot out of this group. Certainly is the place to be. Of course, we are going to get on the roof for this first game. 4-0, you mentioned it. The most important part for them is to just start solid, start with a win. I thought perhaps against the LGL representatives, they wouldn't even have a strategy that they'd reveal something like the Elise. But draft always changes your opinion on when you should be picking things and why. This is one of those games where Elise can control the early jungle into the Trundle. It may be a practice matchup for them. You've got really good CC to actually lock down with targets. Karma in the mid lane has the tether. Guaranteed crowd control for a cocoon follow-up. Same thing with the Leona in the bottom lane. The Shen taunt in the top lane. The map is his oyster. Certainly expecting a lot of activity from the jungler, which kind of makes sense given how well Stomach has played in these early games. He's just been kind of king of the hill in a lot of ways from the jungle. I mean, you look here, his stats across the board looking very, very good. It definitely has been Stone Mage. We mentioned just before, he's got really creative pathing. That's something that we'll have to consider, but not just the pathing. He's involved in most of the kills as well. You can see rank one in kills plus assists at 15 minutes. He's pretty much everywhere all of the time. And whenever Supermassive seems to be succeeding, you should see him there. And of course, for playmaking duos, his partner in crime is support Snowflower, who's had 
just an amazing looking tournament so far. This is a guy that was super hyped coming into the tournament and he has still delivered. Yeah, he was very hyped up, but he didn't just, you know, be good. He, he became better than that. He demands bans right now. The Thresh is a must ban from him. And one team decided one time that maybe we won't see what happens. They lost incredibly quickly. Instant regret from them. And now everyone knows that he is commanding respect. And the Rakan as well, something that has to get taken from him. Or he will just win the game by himself. Well, we'll see if he can emulate all of this on Leona, of course, as the picks have been changed up. Snowflower was a little late to land, didn't see exactly what happened, but I think he may have leashed for Stone Mage. So right now, Zaytnut and Snowflower getting pushed in somewhat by the Caitlyn Rakan. That's not unexpected if Rakan and Caitlyn get any kind of control in the lane. They will fall behind just that little bit until the wave resets, but they can go forwards if they want yep, as well. Going straight in after Shock Ignite already onto Gang, but he does get away. No summoners burn. I feel like that was just an assertion of dominance from Supermassive. However, the Ignite, the Aftershock, the extra damage, maybe surprise kill threat, but nothing more. They will still lose the level two push and they will still be on the back foot, but they keep kill threat. That's what they were really after. Bully him out, get his health low. Don't let him use the three potions and the sustain and heals that a Rakan has. Yeah, good. Doesn't win. Quill, sorry, from Rakan does get him a little bit of health back, but Stomage is down here oh, alongside one. No idea. This is really dangerous for the side of Pentagram if they don't know where the Elise is. Who moves first though, there's a big wraparound gate and they're now going to go back in. Snowflower with the stun, lands in on that, going to run towards the jungler. Maybe got something happening here as everyone's flashing away. Snowflower, whoa, ignited and taken down for first blood. And the fight, it's still going to continue. Zaytnot does get the Kalski onto Utori as once. Forced away as the one, just going to go back in, but GBM with a TP of his life. Down to kill once in the two for one trade. And they managed to give the kill to GBM as well. Stone Mage doesn't hit most of his spells, could have kept his team alive, and unfortunately, they will still end up trading for Super Massive. But fortunately for Pentagram, they were there to get it done. Even if they did not know that Stone Mage was around the corner, he was in the correct place at the correct time here once. As we get to see what happens down here, it starts with Super Massive going forward, Snowflower. Now oh, it's going to be a major part of the engage, and that was a bait from Pentagram. Of course they were going to get hit by it. So much hits a cannon, W's a cannon, misses literally everything and unfortunately his support dies. So whilst the damage was still alive, they were able to secure that one. And the follow-up hit was very nice and ensuring the GBM gets this. He flashes for it, he autos and gets the double buffs. Always a nice feeling of the solo laner and despite two spell books on the Pentagram side, no extra TP available as GBM is able to make that an uneven fight once. So no still flash. on the gank train, looking mid lane. GBM doesn't have a flash, so if they want to threaten him out, now's a decent time to do so. But it's not like it isn't scripted or anything. Stone Mage is nearby, he's fully aware of where the trundle should be. He's able to defuse it. Have some vision though, once so gonna just probably try and catch up in farm as GBM, maybe thinking about another roam. Thinking that perhaps once is in the jungle instead, he clears up left side scuttle, gets level four, and maybe looks top, although looks like he's gonna dip back and take a plant first. Cheeky little pathing there from Snowfire. It is very difficult for Stone Mage to actually 1v1 the trundle as well. If they ever meet in the middle of the jungle, you have to be super cautious with that trade. You have to hit the cocoon, but even then, he just perseveres through it and starts to turn the damage around onto you. And the repel doesn't necessarily get you to safety unless you're near a place of utility available. So often you'll be finding that if there is a fight, it's a 2v2 from the Elise. You may even start to see some 1v1s or some aggressive movements, however, from once. Good in a scrap. As we've learned in Australia, spiders are real bad in a 1v1 versus someone with a big, heavy object. As once is going to take down the rest of his camps. Good wards, actually. Putting too much through his jungle, so they have knowledge that he is on the top side currently. Not Not once, though, also going to get spotted. Thinking maybe about the Ocean Drake. It looks like Supermassive have the idea that he could start on the mine, but he's going back down the bot lane. And it's decent timing when you look at the map. Two people have recalled, but Supermassive are hyper aware of it. They're not actually running away early. They're delaying it, perhaps feigning that they didn't have vision in the river and waiting for him to see the control ward before they choose to back, knowing that they're safe, no real risk. Of course, Karma in the mid lane had recalled. Stone Mage in the jungle had also gone back to base to purchase their items. So you look at the timing from Pentagram, it was correct. Very good time to get a gank off. But they knew. Yep, Vision was there again. Supermassive have done kind of all the things right, it feels like. Not just from individual talent perspective, but across the map in their macro have looked very clean. Stone Mage, Stone Mage is going to clear out that ward and then put a control ward of his own again. Seems like kind of bot side's the hot spot right now for the early game. Yeah, definitely is. The teleports in the mid lane reflects that as well. And actually, when we do look towards the mid lane, you'll notice the Aegis once again from the Karma. Now, Karma in the mid lane is currently 0 and 5 in MSI, not having a very good performance. But we've only seen one banner of command so far in the mid lane. And it has got a lot of utility against magic damage dealers. 
However, the interesting part about that is that Syndra is one of the few champions that works nicely around it, being able to pick up the cannon and actually throw it elsewhere, especially once you get the banner, uh, the Baron buff. God, there's a tongue twister sometimes. <laughs> Well, you can see Zeitner with a good trade down onto Utorius. Stomage is going to invade. Looking for once, trying to steal away the big Raptor perhaps, but just going to wait around. Looks like the little ones are being dealt with. Still back in, nice pillar. As Gang also roaming up. Lands the Q, moves back, baits out the Cocoon and gets back to lane. Yeah, he revealed himself very early with a Scrying Orb, but I think he just wants to hit it so at least doesn't. And then wanted to run the heck away back towards his bottom lane to safety where the Caitlyn is. Very content leaving Caitlyn in a 1v1 against the Zyra as well. There should be very little kill threat, especially this early. Yep. See the itemization choices as well. They just want to hang out. They want to farm for a little bit longer. Yep. Cull's there. Cull generally spells that, absolutely. So... Utori is going to be hanging out, and he has been, been playing quite aggressive in a lot of the early to mid game situations. The leads generally come from him. He's been playing quite well this tournament, but maybe choosing a different step this time on the Caitlyn, just saying, I'll play a little bit slower. And against the enemy draft, there's a Shen that's now level 6. <laughs> also, you want to go in on the bottom lane, you're going to have a pretty bad experience, so why not continue to farm up, just scale in your damage. Caitlyn, whilst she has troughs, does have major strengths at the other sides of those curves as well. That might be a big place they're looking towards as Ornold in top lane. Ooh, great flash though from Fab Fabulous. Not a bad trade though from Pentagram. It's a quick little defusal. It's not going to mean that he gets his own jungle on the opposite side, whoever just revealed himself in top lane. Yeah, once being up there means an instant invade as Elise was already looking to continue that pressure. And now bot lane knows that something is amiss. And this is what happens when you reveal yourself as a jungler. Information and the knowledge of that is just power for Supermassive. They unlock their mid laner, they roam down towards the bottom, they threaten the dive and they push Pentagram away. And then they just take the dragon, knowing full well that one, I mean, he hasn't revealed himself running straight down the river. He's definitely stealing our jungle, but I already got his. I have yeah, the tempo. Got enough vision. Looks like Romina going to get all the little raptors and give the big one over as GBM is also back down to the bot side. Again, just covering for his jungler, making sure he can solo out the Drake effectively. And yeah, whenever Gang and Yutori Moyashi go missing, they have to assume that he's potentially walking over to the dragon. This is an epic battle, though. Yep, gonna win barely. Haven't seen that one in a while, Spider vs. Drake, but at least does win this time. And level 6 as well. And plus the ocean, which is, as everyone knows, great for the early laning phase. One slope. Okay. Trying to do what he can to steal these away, gets control ward. He's lost hitting all the things up here. You can see the thought process as well. He's like, I could do this all the time. Oh, oh Shen of... going in, what a great combo, but Yutori actually flashes out of the way. Still the taunt incoming. Looks for it, doesn't quite get it. Now the root lands back in after the knockup. This looks like a decent turnaround for Pentagram. Snowflower what down. Ulti there from Zaya gonna lock him back in, but his feathers actually didn't quite clip him. Still needs the damage Zaya not looking for, but I think it's gonna cost him his life. Looking for the execute, but the last turret shot does not land. And now someone else is gonna grab it. Revenge there as Gang takes down the AD carry from Supermassive. The support locks it down. Now Ramano just left to try and defend the turret, but everything will fizzle out and Pentagram get the even trade as well. Zeitnot sacrificing himself to ensure that Utori went down. Just acknowledge that's the state of this gank. It didn't start well, didn't end well. Very unfortunate for the side of Supermassive as they took the proactive move with the Shen. He's gonna hang out in this brush for a little while too. Now gonna get checked. Probably can get up, maybe can even fight 1v2, but Rakan just gonna get away as Rumune pushes the wave. And a swap, at least for now, has been called, but we'll check that out in a second as we watch the replay. It's just a nice little flash here at the end from the Caitlyn. Doesn't get hit by the stun at the very last second, means that the combo wasn't there, the Shen taunt wasn't there. They may well have just been Caitlyn dead. The reinforcements they get here at the correct time. Gang uses the ultimate, wants to actually help out his AD carry. And the fancy feat from Yutori Miyashi. Last for long enough that Zeitnot has to sacrifice himself. There was no way out, even though just to the top right of your screen was his reinforcements. Well, a good kill back and forth, but looks like the pressure is going to mount as good. And the ulti pretty much just on the wave does get the knock up onto Snowflower, but maybe not enough to even clear that uh -oh. out. And now at least looking at a 1v1 a Caitlyn. Goodbye. And the tower falls, and that is the first turret of the game. Every single time you have seen Caitlyn on your screen, Caitlyn has been unfortunately dying right now. That is the state of the bottom lane 2v2 from Pentagram. The rest of the map still trying to fight. Well, again, another fight breaking out. 1v2 actually, if somebody books it out of the way. Ult burnt by once, trying to shred those stats. Rumine also up here. Not a bad candidate to try and get a kill. Once actually going to grab it, but a good stun from Syndra will ensure it. I do think they should be putting some extra caution into who is securing these kills. Give that one to Ramune, make sure your mid laner gets in. The bottom lane, give that one to Paz as well, not to Gang. He's now 2-0 and 2 on the Rakan. He seems to acknowledge, I am the carry. And that is something that you see far too often from the LJL is the Koreans in the roster. They take all those kills. Oh, 
It's a good trade. Actually, it's Pentagram up in gold despite being down that Ocean Draken. It's actually interesting to think, again, Pentagram have not had a great start to the tournament, but the overall gold differences actually don't look that bad in the early game. They usually hold on quite well when it comes to about 15 minutes. 10 to 15 is when they start to drop off just a little bit. They're strong in their own region. They've got such good players that in the LGR they always shine. But Yutori has been certainly the star of this team, and when you look at where the gold is actually going, Turns out Yutori is ending up with basically the whole difference along with Gang, but never mind, it's a fight breaking up for a second. Actually, a TP back in the front. Titan trying to get out of the way. Already burnt the ulti, trying to escape. Uh, Fabulous down, gets a taunt Ramune with a good clip. Now Flash is forward, gonna try and get the kill. Needs one more spear. Flash gets it. Ramune with the trade. He's dead, absolutely. And Fab Fabulous probably gonna get a Snowflower. Thinking about the steal, wants to secure. Secure, secure. Oh, he gets it. <laughs> he tried so hard not to take it. What is the support to get? It kills regardless. Of course, super massive. They will trade the Shen teleport. Was the thing that came in clutch there. And good reactions from Zaitna. Very quick on the use of the ultimate there to last as long as he possibly could. And also the return of the uh, the E here, making sure that they all got rooted for so much time. Whilst the reinforcements come in, the Leona stun was good, but the flash was even better from Ramne going forward. No one expected him to go that direction, so he does secure the kill. Does make it a trade in the end. I would say for Pentagram, they probably should have got the kill and got out. They may have been able to do that, but they missed the execution just that little bit by how well it was played from Zach. And again, lots of back and forth, still the goal going back to even. Unfortunately, in this game, the massive draft has really been try and do as much damage as you can in the bot lane. And for Yutori, the man has had all the gold in the bot lane. He is struggling right now. Yeah, to be fair, one thing does stick out like a sore thumb, and that is the AD carry strengths. When you contrast the two of them, Zaitnot. Having a decent showing so far, getting the kill, setting himself up nicely. Yutori Mayashi not having the best start to this game. And through that, when you look at the champions they're playing, definitely not a place that you want to be Caitlyn in whatsoever. Picked it into the Leona, picked it into champions that will take him down in lane, and went down in lane. Dire Straits. Well, we'll see, actually Supermassive kind of swapping things up. As Cloud Drake spawning in a minute, we'll maybe move us back down to the bot side. For now, GBM hanging out the top. There's a root on the gang. Good ulti after the cleanse. Now actually might try reinitiation, but has to be careful. Onto the blast cone, safe as once with a pillar. Ensures the defense. He's buying some time. It felt like that from the Rakan. The reinforcements arrived, but it's not reinforcements that will kill someone. So just make sure that he's able to continue that constant pressure and try and alleviate that so that they can get an opportunity, this time on the top side of the map, and they are looking. GBM does have his splash, but not going to burn it just yet. Knows the Shen is there, it might have been a ruse all along, but GBM going to get shredded down. The damage might be enough, but the Spirit's Refuge, wonderful from Fat Fabulous. GBM flashes once, follows, and now Paz going to look for it once, gets it, but now a 2v2. Everyone's Make it Snowfall, make it sight. Now a 2v4. Somebody try and get out safe, because I don't think you're both going to make it out alive, but his team actually coming back around. Coming. Paz going to get rooted down by the Venezuela, well. turns it back around with a W. Everybody's here! Pentagram gonna try and turn it all around! Ramune gets the kill onto Stormage! And now they lock the front side as Fat Fabulous is out of cooldowns and out of luck. Gets taken down! Yutori finally grabs the kill! What a turnaround from Pentagram! It's so good for Pentagram to keep going, last for as long as they do. Get the collapse, get the teammates there. Looks towards the Herald now as well. And they should have time to do exactly that. Fat Fabulous was a hero. He sacrificed himself to ensure that the rest of his team does get out. But it starts with Pentagram going forwards one more time. GBM takes the fight. Mantra empowers his tether to heal through it. Tries to last for the rest of his team to get here. But there's just so much damage that comes out of once right now. He's been taking all the gold on that trundle. He is super fed. Good flash from Paz as well. Forces a prolonged amount of time where Zaitnot and Snowflare are just walking around. And meanwhile, all of the LJL squad get here. They get a six stun combo off with Gang and Ramune in particular after that clutch start. And Fat Fabulous. That taunt keeps most of his team alive, thankfully. Could have been so much worse if he wasn't there. Now he just has to sacrifice himself. Ton of summoners burnt in the exchange, but it is Pentagram that come out ahead. And now with a 2,000 gold lead in this early game. I mean, they'll take it. Again, they've had pretty solid early games, but having a lead feels nice in the spot. Super Massive going to have to play on the back foot for a couple minutes. I mean, they're taking on the indomitable force of the TCL team right now in Super Massive. They're the ones that are favorites indefinitely. 3-0 on the first day. And now the 2,000 goal behind against a team that has been struggling through the mid game. Another attempt though here, looking for the pick on the gang. Beautiful W over the wall, but gonna get chased out. Great shot! That's enough! Oh no! 
He deserves to live, but Storm Edge had the dot ticking. So close to living. Challenging Smite does do a great deal of damage, and now they get a chance to push in the mid lane. Even if he lived, Supermassive still had the objectives fallen. They had the turret in the mid lane looked at and set up for, and now they continue further. Banner of Command helping out the stun is good, though, for the ulti. Wonderful stuff from Snowflower as they pick off Utori under the turret. Paz is here. They're going to try and get some counter kills, but a wonderful oh, no. stun prevents the re-kick on the Orn Horn. Now Ramune looking, looks for the stun, but doesn't find Zeitnod. Once does escape on the bot side as Storm Edge is getting chased down. Ramune, though, now getting cornered from every side. The ulti is there. He wants to get a counter kill, but Fab Fabulous is able to get it, and Storm Edge will wander out of the there. The never-ending battle of trying to chase an Elise and still they step up too far, Pentagram. They had the right idea, they wanted to defend it, but you can't just put a Caitlyn up by herself. Not without a QSS, not without a cleanse, but not without a team to keep you alive. They were recalling, their support was unable to assist, step too far, way too risky, and no hesitation from the Supermassive roster. They go straight on it. These fights feel like limits have really been tested. This time, Supermassive know them well. And of course, the Leona, the second that you're in stun range, is going to throw the ultimate and try and catch you down. Once is big, so he does live for a long time, but no one's going to be there for the Caitlyn. No one's going to protect the Caitlyn, and that's meant to be your damage source. And unfortunately for the rest of this map, after a great repel from Stone Age, they chase way too far to try and get the kill, and we're completely routed with nowhere to go. Again, the easy dive with Kyle, though, was used here in mid. Counter trade does come back through, and again, the goal is going to sit about 300 or so between the two teams. So using the objective they got earlier to at least keep the map a little more open. Yes, they're still down another turret in mid, thanks to the good push from Supermassive. But again, the trend of trading continues. There is free gold still on the top side for Supermassive, so that's where the risk of the gold blowing out still continues to persist. They got both mid turrets as well. When you look at map control, that provides so much the TCL side. Now for Pentagram, they see the objective. They're playing forwards. They're looking to take this fight, it feels like. And they are stepping up for it. Yeah, I mean, maybe feeling pretty fight ready. Not too much going on in mid lane. Kai's actually again lining up the ulti. Gang with a recombo. Look at it go in for it. Beautiful stuff for Snowflake. Goes back in to try and save the team. GDM getting zoned out by one. So is actually the rest of the carries as Paz is straight there in the back line. Fat Fabulous though tying them all up as Paz tries to kite back around the Shen. Is going to live for now and now. Once is isolated on the bot side. You know, one v 3 they may well get out of. No flash, but doesn't matter. Nobody going down. Nobody dies, but it does feel like the sustain is still there for Supermassive. The map position is still there for them. So the objective will be secured, but you are still seeing the makings of Pentagram right now in these team fights. The potential that they have got. The Rakan Orn combo was not perfectly executed, but it was good. And the fight was close to getting kills. That was actually a super tense moment. I mean, Essentiva versus Banner for the carries on the super massive side. Ramune still kind of picking pieces together. That was a BF sword, rapid by Cannon Caitlyn. Utori has any more items, and especially that crucial three that they always want. That fight's very different. Yeah, a big part of the fights moving forwards will be, firstly, can Caitlyn actually get items, or is he going to stay behind? And secondly, can Syndra assassinate the Zaya? Can Syndra assassinate someone? When you've got a Rakan and an Orn going forwards with all of the CC that they've got to lock you down, there's a chance that you get that ultimate off. There is a chance that you actually kill one of the major carries, and it is primarily Zeitnot in this game, especially with a Banner of Command on uh, GBM. And you've got a Shen that's going to be primarily split pushing in the side lanes. You take Zeitnot down, you can win this game. Yeah, I mean, again, also Titanic for Fat Fabulous, who, as you said, is focusing more on the side lane. You can see once right now, there's uh, had a much better game as far as jungle proximity goes. His day two, not so hot, but this game, way more active. And a lot of it towards the top lane, too, but very active from once. Always in the correct place. If it's a little bit late, doesn't matter. He's still there, at least where he was not last time. And he's being proactive going forward. You're seeing night and day shifts from the jungler of Pentagram right now. And moving into the major objectives, you have to feel like they're actually set up feeling confident. And again, important against the jungler that's ruling the roost as far as rankings go from the jungle in Stone Age. So, Elise, I mean, I liked a lot of the early pressure, but we'll see how it kind of unfolds as we're 20 and a half minutes through this game. Baron has spawned, as you mentioned, and still the map is quite enclosed. A lot of space for both teams to work with and try and execute some of their game plans. But Pentagram are not afraid of fighting, that much I can tell you. They can get repels out very easily, waste the cooldown from their opponents if they just step up and try and Syndrist on the risk of not repelling. Very big. Lots of respect needs to be shown by Supermassive. And in this tense moment where it does feel like one thing could blow the game wide open, Baron's there, the top lane out of turret is still there as a safety zone. The LJL side. There's actually a lot of good things going for them. 
Yep, again, just trying to protect this top side here and give Yutori farm. I think they need time, maybe more than anything else, but they are willing to contest for a lot of their objectives. However, the four-man die that's lining up, he's going to move Ramune out, but Fat Fabulous in danger, getting solo killed once, actually also going to get picked off here, perhaps. But not enough damage. Moves up to defend, and that's okay. Oh, the one we want to continue. Fat Fabulous with the Titanic takes down on. Super close fight. You could see that Paz wanted it, but Fat Fabulous once again comes up too clutch. Way too strong as the top laner is super massive, and that just buys space, buys time, and buys control of Summoner's Rift around the Baron area. Look at the vision that they have as well. We're going to see how this actually pans out. In the bottom lane, note that he goes forwards first, and he wants to take the fight. But Titanic Hydra does a lot of damage, so does an entire minion wave. At that matter. And check in a second. Oh, great. Some from Snowflower. Flash cleanse, insta burnt by Ramune. Looking maybe for something else. Pillar goes out to try and slow the jungle off. But if all those things didn't add together, I did not check this when we started the game with Rusty, but Fat Fabulous is Conqueror Shan. He certainly is. Damage over time against the tank. Sadly, he didn't go the Warlord skin. Man. That would have been the perfect flavor combination. His blue <laughs> does go over to once. But again, you're talking about he knows you have to sideline, or he's going to be his opponent. Such an intelligent choice from the Shen in that 1v1. And of course, the standard you would say is the grasp of the Undying against tanks. You'll very easily be able to get those procs off. We've seen some kleptomancies as well against tanks if you want to outscale them and go for your Trinity Force builds. But maybe that's just my league. <laughs> that is the LPL. I don't know about you guys, but we have that all the time. Conqueror. I mean, they're big, big, burly guys. Just punch them like bags of money fall out. Seems good to me. That's literally the approach that they take as well. But this one, the Conqueror, just a bit more extra damage in those traits. And I think really speaks to the game plan of Shen is pretty firmly in side lanes in this game. He knew that the game would eventually break to some sort of 1-3-1 or 4-1 uh, outline. And he just wants to know that in those 1v1 situations, even when Orn gets very, very tanky, he has at least enough to pressure him out of the lane and open up the rest of the map for his team. Definitely a possibility. You just saw that through the kill as well. It starts to snowball and get even worse if you are Paz from that position onwards. He saw his moment. His moment is gone. Now all of the control does belong once more to Supermassive. Still game incredibly tense between these two teams. Only 2,000 between them as barren like it has been in many of these games. Maybe the thing that breaks it all open. But both teams are well aware of that fact. So how they set it up is going to be crucial. We've already seen the Shen be able to get pressure. GBM second TP the same. At this point, Pentagram and two items on Yutori might be thinking a little bit better in a team fight. There's just so much caution though from both of these teams. The fight you mentioned, yeah, could definitely be better. From Pentagram through the strength of their AD carry now. But on the opposite side, it's just cautiously clearing wards. They're only stepping aggressive now. This is the first time we've really seen it from them. But they have to do it as a team. They want to utilize the Shen, but he's still stuck not pushing at the moment. The second one person gets split, he gets punished. Once trying it on though, it does get Snowflower. The old how's it going? As uh, Leona is going to move out. No ult committed though from the Trundle, so just uh, happy with a bit of poke damage there. He's uh, also gone to top lane pastry, yeah, so he's not setting himself up to help defend this middle lane right now. If they can catch onto someone, they can look for it. Somebody's got to address the side lane, but GBM is looking for a pick. Great cleanse, walks left from Gank, gets out from under Leona ult. Very nice little fancy feet there, of course, just the disengage to be seen. But once again, the vision control belongs to Supermassive. Look at the minimap, there's just control wards everywhere, vision everywhere. There is literally nothing that Pentagram can do but start to face check soon if it continues along this path. And despite the goal being close, this has really been one of the big difference makers for Supermassive so far in the tournament. They are just so well drilled in vision, in macro, that they know. I mean, a lot of these little objective advantages that they built for themselves have just come from good, strong map play that starts with good vision. And for context as well, it's getting cleared out now, but that actually means the vision of Pentagram is getting placed with the intent of denying the vision from Supermassive. He'll walk back in, place it again, and they've just shopped. So they have more vision, they have more wards, and they will regain control of this area. It's just a question of when. They can go to the Ocean Drake if they would like as a, a higher priority objective. And should be able to get that one as all of the vision from our LJL, LJL team just went through the Baron. And again, still kind of looking for you, Tori, to get the farm going. I love the QSS here. Very smart choice, given the amount of CC available on the other side. But we talk about Caitlyn really needing three items to get things off the ground. And now that jumping off point is going to come a lot later than he'd like. But he does need to play with safety. So I think Pentagram know that, yes, we want to fight, but we need to pick the right time. In this case, it's not just about all of the CC as, as well. It's about the engage that they've got. Most of that actually does belong to follow-up CC. So the Leona can hit the engage. The Cocoon follows the Tether from Karma as well. Has to combo, or well, they can't commit to a full 5v5. The QSS will do wonders for him. Tori, with the red buff, getting some damage done, though. It's a fab fabulous, but this long mid lane 
causing problems as Supermassive just abusing that fact to, again, get all this vision deep into the enemy jungle and look to take the Ocean Drake now. They are letting this game go to three items. Though. They are letting the side of Pentagram scale. They're looking for the team fights. There will be an opportunity here in this game where it's not that Supermassive's team fighting composition is explicitly weak, but they're giving that chance over. I mean, trusting in, I think, Zeitnot's ability as a player, but also I think GBM, if he is going to go something like an Arden Sensor late into the game, potentially able to buff up that Zaya as well. Now going to banner a bot lane minion, help for Fabulous' push. But uh, looks like he's doing with a banner minion of his own, but winning right now with the Titanic Hydra. One of the things that does make you actually start to see a little bit more Trinity Force shanks as well, get some extra <laughs> attack speed and damage. All makes sense now. <laughs> well, there is a reason for it. He's, just not, he's not a mad man. He's definitely still a professional player. Well, looks like GVM might be going death cap, so I think knowing that he does need to amplify both the shields and his poke damage there from the Q. So again, still a very tight game. Super massive holding and still that 2,000 gold lead and three drakes is nice, even if the double ocean and a cloud don't matter as the game stacks up, especially if we go all the way to Eldo. I mean, having two oceans does help a lot when you look at the potential engages of Pentagram. There's not a lot of poke from them, but the Caitlyn rapid fires, things like that start to add up over time. So now that's not really an opportunity at all when they try and set up for Siege. If you're Pentagram, they need to get kills. Just straight out get the kills or the sustain starts to become a little bit too powerful. Two Clouds also enables them to start going forwards if they connect on the next Drake here as well. Well, we've uh, reached an interesting threshold right now, Rusty, given that we talked about, again, Pentagram, you know, holding on, but at some point breaking. They've done a good job holding on to that point so far, and such a good job, in fact, that this is currently Supermassive, Longest ever game at MSI. Wow, well, we're 20 so far in the tournament. And that's their longest game. This is their longest game so far. 28 minutes. Yeah. All right. So that kind of tells you how dominant they've been in their first day of play. Pentagram doing a nice job here, but again, all of that control finally mounting in a very cheeky two man Baron. Oh, actually, they're looking for the fight here. Yeah, again, oh. Pentagram kind of sniffing it out, but can't get in the pit in time. Paz also not channeling the TP. Baron at 3k health. That's going to be gifted over. And you can see what Vision does for you. That's a very, very sad blue trinket that gets the bad news a little too late. It's really unfortunate for Pentagram. You could tell they were trying super hard to play around the Vision game, but they were just bested in that area completely. They were shut out. They had no chance to go forwards. You mentioned the Scry is all just that little bit too late, but also face checking because they had to yes. was diffused. And they just had to back away and walk the long way. And in that time, the Baron was taken. It's just very clean, honestly, from Supermassive. Well, we've seen a lot of games break open that were close with Baron. That's kind of what the buff is designed to do. So we'll see now what Supermassive can get done. I have a feeling that this Baron buff will end the game you think almost so? with the amount of Banner of Command cannon minions they could have running around in every single lane. Well, they have three banners, uh, a Death Cap now on their Karma, and three items on their AD carry. So I'm willing to agree with you that everyone has kind of hit that critical point now for Supermassive. And again, we look at the Caitlyn. A zeal is not quite enough to upgrade into the Static no, Shiv. Uh, not exactly a damage item. They're going to do the best they can here, though, to hold on for as long as possible. A pick usually helps. Stymie the Baron push for a significant amount of time. If it goes onto a side lane or even better, if you take down Zaitnot, that's the best case scenario, but we've mentioned that before already. Caitlyn makes things actually quite difficult for the traps as well when you try and step up in Siege. And Zaya is a low range carry, so that's why Banner is being brought to attention as the highest priority thing on the map. There is a Syndra to help though. Well, it looks like again, Ramuna, yep, gonna pull that creep away for Fabulous. Actually, TP to the bot lane to try and continue pressure. That is gonna force Paz to rotate back down to the bot side. And these turrets will just fall from the cannon as well. Every side lane that a Karma or a Shen puts that on a cannon, it just drops turrets. Tanks can't deal with it. Syndra can, but she needs to be in the mid lane right now. They take the turret for free. Yeah, again, Supermassive just playing across these three lanes very, very well. Once again, fishing, kind of baiting out something from the Elise or the Zaya, but the pillar does not deter them as they do take the tier two turret in bot. And like you said, the top tier two also incredibly vulnerable. It was Shen's turn. Now it's GBM's turn on the top side. Of course, the pressure continues down here. That minion has not been dealt with at all. And it is up to the inhibitor. Paz has to stand in front of the tower constantly, or the cannon changes aggro. And with that, the tower just falls. GBM now upgrades the cast creep to a full wizard. Oh, what? There's a bit of extra damage. Gang, they're trying to find side. Now they need the chain CC. Not quite enough just yet. The turret is going to go down in top of Paz. Looking for a big ulti to maybe try and turn it back around. Snowflower riding Shen into battle as well. That's actually just going to be a complete disengage, and that is a bad thing for Pentagram. They don't get a kill, they don't get a pick, they use a lot to go forwards. 
And suddenly with the Baron buff still there for 45 seconds, it's a wave and a half. The next wave is already crashing. And they held off for so long, but for us, I think you may have called it. This Baron is looking to end the game now for Supermassive. There were 2,000 gold ahead. They're approaching 10 at rapid pace. I mean, this is just complete annihilation of three different lanes. Supermassive putting on a clinic, but how to attack three lanes with the Baron. I mean, you could tell that they were trying to stop it from happening, Pentagram. You could see what was going through their heads as well. But with that buff, they're just too strong and forwards. Yeah, now Snowfire wanting blood. Goes into the backside onto Ramune. Nice down onto him, but one second off what he can. But unfortunately for him, looks like he's taking his mayor run out. No, not dead just yet. As the bot lane hip does fall down. Still another 1v1 between those two. Ever amusing, but still super massive close in. Three and hips down. Bounce up for three more seconds. They may time it just perfectly to close out this game. And I stop watch their game with a last inch of a pass. Good two man knockout. Tries to find a few more. And I think Bendy. maybe Petrico keeps him out of that base for long enough now. But Fabulous Stuff does finally go down. A wonderful stuff for Ramuna, but the shield on side note. My goodness, that's massive as pass. Flashes back in. Gonna try and get the damage with the flash. Finally burnt from the Zion. Oh, no. re-engages as Utori has to kite for his life, gets out from under GBM, Scuba Romine goes down to Zeitnut, now Paz, the next one to get locked up, and Supermassive just have too much power, 10,000 gold ahead, one Baron Bar, now looking to close out this game, again Snowflower, running interference, and Zeitnut just walks it all the way home. And in the end, it was a clean game from Supermassive once they got the Baron buff. We can take it back a little bit earlier, and it may not have been the best start for them. But I think that's just where we take a second and we talk about Pentagram, because they controlled a lot of the early game. They matched a lot of the mid-game. They kept up and they were strong. Unfortunately for them, it does knock them out, I believe, of the yes, tournament. It does. But still, they looked a lot better. You can see the day-to-day -day progression and growth from them. Absolutely, and I think certainly a, a ton of credit there. Right place, right time, as you mentioned, but execution just fumbled a couple times, even on that move into the Baron, knowing what they had to do. Well executed by Supermassive, yes, but there were probably a couple things they could have done as well. I mean, tough against an opposition that is basically just strangling you on Summoner's Rift until you pass out. And you saw that game went from 0 to 110 in like record time. That may have been the slowest game of MSI. That's probably one of their fastest closes from that gold lead to what it ended up as. Yeah, slowest game becomes fastest closeout that you'll see with Baron's the Baron power of play commands, for the to records. be fair as 